In this slideshow, we will cover transitions, introductions, and conclusions from chapter eight. So we're getting into the nuts and bolts of a speech. Every speech needs an introduction. It also needs a body, which we're not going to cover in this chapter, but every speech needs an introduction, a body, a conclusion, and the transitions tie them all together. So starting with what we will cover specifically in this chapter, we will focus on the five parts of an introduction, transitions, and conclusions. Now, what I wanna tell you is, it's important to read the material in your textbook. However, what the information that I have in this slideshow is going to be very important for every speech you give, because for every speech that you give, you will have to have five parts to an introduction and four parts to a conclusion. So keep that in mind as you're listening and keep that in mind as you're reading the material from this chapter. So starting with introductions, yes, there are five parts to an introduction. I'll go over each part of the introduction and then I will talk about specific techniques for gaining your attention in just a minute. So with every introduction that you give in a speech, you will include all of these five parts. The only one that you won't include is credibility for your introductory speech. That's the only one that you won't include, but for all other speeches, you'll have five parts to your introduction. So the very first thing that you do when you begin your speech is not, hi, my name is, so you, you don't wanna say that. The very first thing that you wanna say is your attention getter. And we'll talk about the different techniques for gaining attention in a minute. The second thing is establishing relevance for your audience. That's giving them a reason to listen to your speech. Answering the question, why should my audience care? Why should they want to take an interest in listening to me talk about this subject for eight to 10 minutes? So you want to establish relevance for your audience. The third part is credibility. That is giving a statement that explains how you know what you claim to know. So people wanna know, it's, it's your ethos. People wanna know, well, how do you know what you claim to know? Is it your research? Is it your personal experience? So you need to state that for your audience so that they are more likely to listen to you because they're more likely to trust you or to believe you because you have credibility with this particular subject. And then the next one is your thesis statement. And remember that is the bottom line of your speech stated in one sentence. And then the final part of your introduction, and this always needs to be the last part of your speech, is the preview. The preview is the blueprint for your speech. Today I will talk to you about one, two, and three. First, let's start with one, and that's your transition into the body of your speech. So most important to remember is that the very first thing that you begin with in your introduction is your attention getter. The very last thing that you end with in your introduction is the preview and the relevance, credibility, and thesis can come in any order. Okay, so the very first thing is the attention getter, very last thing is the preview, and the other three can come in any order. Now, with regards to the different techniques for gaining your audience's attention, there are many different techniques, so your textbook talks about a few of those techniques, and I will go into detail with a few more. So one of the best ways to gain your audience's attention is to tell a story. You can begin your speech with a story and then you can wait to tell the ending of that story and then you can finish with that story. So it's one of the, the best ways to draw an audience in is by telling them a story. So if you wanted to talk about the importance of safe sex, what I might do is if I were to deliver a speech about safe sex, I might begin with telling you about all my cats and I have three cats and I might talk to you about Byron and then I might tell you a little bit about Snowflake and Katrina. And then you would be wondering, why is she telling me about her cats? And then at the end of my speech, I might finish with my three cats. And it might be my final few sentences. And I would say, remember when I talked to you about Byron and Snowflake and Katrina, and then I would ask my audience, can anyone guess which one of those cats had FIV, which is the equivalent to HIV in humans? And then the audience would look at me and I would say, I bet you can't. And it was Katrina. If you don't know which cat would have this type of disease, how can you know which human would have this type of disease? So be safe. 
So that's a way to begin your speech with a story and then you can end it with a story. Another way, it's called a hypothetical illustration to gain your audience's attention. It, an illustration is also a story, just so you know. So the two terms are used interchangeably. But a hypothetical story is, a, it's getting your audience to visualize, getting them to imagine themselves in a particular situation. It also is an effective way to gain your audience's attention. But if you have the option of telling a factual story versus giving a hypothetical, it's always best to go with a real story because audiences would prefer something that truly has happened as opposed to a hypothetical. Another way to gain your audience's attention is through a quote. If you begin with a quote, my best advice is to memorize that quote to the best of your ability. And then you would say in the words of Aristotle, and then you would state that quote, or you would state the quote, and then you would say, this was quoted by, and then you would state the person who stated that, that's, who made that statement. The next one is a rhetorical question, and a rhetorical question is just to get the audience thinking, you do not expect them to answer, but you need to be careful because sometimes they will answer because they think it's a direct question. So if you are asking a direct question, do be prepared for any type of response because you never know what you're going to get. So if you are going to ask a direct question, be prepared for anything. And then finally is a startling fact or statistic. You can begin with something that will really just startle your audience with, an, with a fact that they may not believe. So an example of, of that might be something along the lines of, if I wanted to persuade my audience to conserve water, to persuade my audience to conserve water, I might begin with a fact from the World Health Organizations that more people in this world have died from dysentery than all world wars combined, and really that is diarrhea than all world wars combined, and that is due to lack of access to clean water, so that's pretty startling. So these are just a few techniques for gaining your audience's attention. There are other techniques. You can tell a joke, but I always suggest that you really, really think about telling a joke because sometimes they are misinterpreted. And oftentimes, if you don't fully know your audience, the jokes can be misinterpreted in the, in the wrong way and be perceived in the opposite way that was intended. So I would be really, really careful with telling a joke. Moving on to transitions, change ahead. So there are different types of transitions. They are extremely important, especially in a speech. So think of it like this, tell your audience what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. I will say that again, tell your audience what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. So tell your audience what you're going to tell them. That is the preview in the introduction. In the body of your speech is the tell them, and the conclusion is the tell them what you told them. So in a speech, people don't get the chance to go back and read what you said. So that is why you have to be somewhat redundant in a speech, and that is why transitions are so important because you're taking the audience by the hand and you're saying, now that we talked about X, we're going to talk about Y. So there are different types of transitions. Number one is enumeration, and it is simple as first, second, third. So you could do something as simple as that for your transitions. There's an internal preview where just like the blueprint for your speech in the introduction, let's say I'm talking about yoga, the example that I used in the previous slideshow. If I'm talking about yoga, I might say something along the lines of, now I'm going to talk to you about how practicing yoga can help achieve mental clarity. That's an internal preview. I'm previewing what's next to come. And then we have internal summaries. So if you want to take it a step further, I would say something along the lines of, I talked to you about the physical benefits of practicing yoga. Now I'm going to talk to you about the mental benefits of practicing yoga. So you're providing a summary for your audience. And what isn't in your textbook is there are other ways to 
transition, you could use quotes between main ideas as your transition. So you can be as creative as you want to, as long as you are thoughtful with the manner in which you are transitioning from one idea to the next. And then finally, conclusions. So like I said for the introduction, your conclusion, I want you to follow this formula for writing a conclusion. There are four parts to a conclusion. The first is signal the ending, and this is just your transition to the conclusion. So you're transitioning into your conclusion. That's what signal the ending is. Restating your thesis is number two. You are restating your thesis. You're restating the bottom line of your speech. Number three is reviewing your main points. Today I talked about one, two, and three. And then number four is ending in a memorable manner. So how do we end in a memorable manner? You don't say that's it, I'm done, I'm finished. You end in a way so that your audience realizes, okay, I'm satisfied, this speech has successfully ended. So what are some techniques for concluding your speech? Number one, you can end with a story like the example that I used for introductions. Number two, you can end with a rhetorical question to leave your audience thinking about something. Number three, you can just end with a memorable comment, just a comment in general for your audience to really understand and get your entire point of your speech, your entire message. And then finally, you can end with a quote. If you do end with a quote, just like if you began with a quote, you want to do your best to deliver that quote with full eye contact and make sure that the person who made that comment is cited. So I have covered introductions, I've covered transitions and conclusions. Remember, five parts to an introduction, four parts to a conclusion. It differs a little bit from what your textbook states with regards to introductions and conclusions.